very interesting tonight whenever Darian does finally make his return to Turbulence and actually gets in the face of Mr. Nightgown, and he's going to be able to confront him, and he's going to be able to set the record straight. And I think Nile is going to be owing Dan Darian an apology by the time all this is over and done with. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we've got about five more minutes until time for the match to start. Uh, time for the show to start. There's a lot of stuff you covered, brother. I'll tell you what. Darian the Great, he is the great in his own mind. I'll tell you what. As he walks out and the fans begin to boo him, they pretty much boo him out of the auditorium. And his smiling face eats that stuff up like a hungry boy eats a bowl of grits in the south. And well, uh, well. it's going to be interesting to see what happens. That's all I got to say. And here comes Sarah Jane. Well, you have to admit, Darian is where he's at because he doesn't worry about what these people think. He doesn't worry about being accepted. He doesn't worry about being hated. He's here to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to be the best performer in VAW. He holds the title, and that proves that he is the best. He could give a damn what anybody thinks about him, and I have to agree with him 100%. Why does he need to worry about what people think about him when all he has to do is just be able to walk around and prove he's the best because he's got that strap around his waist? I mean, he really doesn't have anything to prove. But, like I said, you know, management is going to, you know, pull the whole thing about going to make him answer for his actions. And I'm sure that it was one of those things that management just decided they wasn't going to listen to it. They wasn't going to do this because now has his little thing going on. Anybody that wants to be a great wrestler should do it in the ring, not in the back, and not injuring opponents so you don't have to face them along the way. Uh, that's the coward's way out. The great one is a coward. Okay, whatever. Apparently, you're kissing nightgown's ass, too. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have got about three minutes left, so make sure that you do us all a favor and make sure that you take off any unnecessary HUDs and anything like tummy talkers and booby smackers and all that other good stuff to try to help us cut down on lag. Everybody knows exactly you know how lag hits here in SL, so we want to make it enjoyable for you all as well as make it enjoyable for the performers, so if we can cut down as much as we possibly can. Also, we ask that if you are not part of the VAW staff, Please, please, please do not be on voice. That way everybody can hear what's going on and can, uh, you know, and, and be able to keep up and follow with everything. We don't want to make sure that everybody, you know, can hear in case there's something missed because, you know, we got promos that go on. We say stuff here at the commentary table that, you know, is important for whatever the going on with the performers. We just want to make sure that nothing is missed. Also, we want to go ahead and say TPN all your friends. It doesn't matter if you really like them. It doesn't matter how much you like them and how much you dislike them. But make sure that when you do TP them in, please TP them on your side of the barrier. We do know that lag happens. We do understand. And we understand the lag spikes. So just make sure that you put them on that side of the barrier so they don't accidentally get accused of jumping over the barrier and then end up getting ejected out of here. Also, make sure that you shout out the word HUD in local and you will get a production HUD from our great production staff and all you have to do is go into your preferences set your voice settings to where you can hear voice from camera not from avatar and you'll be able to hear everything a lot clearer and we will take care of all of the camera angles so you don't have to worry about zooming and moving around and trying to get the best angle we'll make sure that we do that for you also make sure that you shout out the word rate in local and you will get another little HUD on the little icon, and you can rate the show, and you rate it per segment. That does not mean that you have to rate, wait, and say, oh, this show sucks, which some people will say it does, and some people will go and say that, you know, it's great. But you can rate it per segment, where if you come up and you like what happened with the first match, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't have to like it. Then we come up to a promo. If you like that promo, you do it per segment. That way we know what you like and what you don't like. It can help us improve on what is already the best brand and the best show in SL. We're looking at just under a minute. We're going to be getting kicked off here right away. We want everybody to come in. There's going to be one hell of a match, especially those of you who were here last week, and we're going to have a battle of the demons. Now, we got the demon of death, and we have the demon, and it's about time these two locked up, and they are actually going to be in a casket match. If you take a look up at the front of the stage, right before we get down to the ramp, the casket is already set up, and I tell you what, I personally would not want to be in that. Not because I'm scared to be the one of them, but I just don't think it's my time to go yet. 
But tonight we're going to find out who is the true demon here in BAW. And I got a feeling it's going to be a match for the ages. We're going to have a Divas match tonight. We're going to have a handicap match tonight. We're going to, you know, Darian is supposed to be here and he's supposed to be able to be come out here and he's going to finally, you know, get in Niall's face and tell Niall he's tired of all the crap that Niall's been talking. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. It is time for Thursday Night Turbulence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you out to Thursday Night Turbulence. It is showtime. Alongside me is my co-worker and probably one of the best color commentary men in SL, and that is Mr. Rowdy Rob. And also, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that we have the camera kitty here tonight, so this show is actually going to be recorded, so make sure you look your best. Bring in all your friends, get them out here, and get them on camera, and they will become instant superstars thanks to the great work of Miss Camera Kitty, because this will probably end up going up on YouTube. I'll tell you what, I may, that's very kind of you to say, as far as I'm concerned, as far as doing my commentary, I'm just having a ball with it. It's fun, man, and I'll tell you, it's like I'm living the dream, brother. Yeah, me too. I'm living the trailer park dream of being out here next to you every week. Got to love it. Couldn't be any happier. If I was any happier, there'd be two of me. Somebody pass him some grits and mullet, man. No, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get Southern Boy to come back out here, and uh, he's going to share some of that moonshine. I know he's got some. He's always got some in the truck. Now, I'll tell you what, Grits is also called Georgia Ice Cream. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is not what I expected. I was getting ready to announce our competitors for the first match, and instead we've got Morgan and her first sergeant, Miss Sienna, coming out here. And it looks like Morgan's going to be joining us on commentary. And even though I do support Morgan, I know that she's kind of sometimes got a bad attitude. She tells me to shut up. So, Morgan, go ahead and have a seat, and please go right ahead and take over. I really didn't need you to tell me to take the seat. It was always my plan all along. And whether I sit down, it's up to me. Okay, as much as I support you, you're really starting to turn into a real bitch. You know that? Kind of what happens when you're a bitch to start with and then you're a champion. You've got a lot of people being complete dicks to you, so you've just got to talk them. I have done nothing but supported you. I'll tell you one thing that's sure true. you got a target on, the, on your back and every lady inside... The locker room that's wrestling has their eyes on your back and your championship. Yeah, but you know what's quite handy with that? Is that anyone that tries to aim for that target, there's Sienna right behind me to take that bullet. And with the way as close as you two are, I'm surprised that she does not have a strap on on when she's behind you. Tell me you're not saying you're going to rely on Sienna to... Keep that belt on around your waist, young lady. Oh no, I can do that myself. But it's always good to have that little extra cushioning. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, making her way to the ring, as I mentioned before, this is actually Carmen. She is a 
five foot five, one hundred and twenty pounds, and she is from Puerto Rico. She is not a rookie. She has actually been a professional wrestler since two thousand and eight. A little bit of background, like I said, she's from Puerto Rico, and she's gotten into some bad situations over the years. But she learned how to take those situations, turn to a positive by taking all of her aggressions and bringing it in and beating up on. You know, on less, on lesser known competitors, and she has a reputation for being a very, basically a real hard ass. I'm actually glad to see her here in the VAW because there's been some of the competition that, you know, kind of been lagging just a little bit. Morgan, I really personally don't care what you think about her, but I'm going to go ahead and ask anyway. This is your first time seeing her. I don't know if you saw her in the past or not, but, you know, she's going to be taking on your, you know, unfortunately, your number one Contender, Ayani, but she's not really much of a contender. <sighs> I'm telling you I'm something, Ayani. Ayani can can hit you with wrestling and martial arts, and if she ever does face you for that championship, I reckon. You're going to have the fight of your life. No, on that note, I'm fighting her next week, I do, I believe. After she challenged me last week, I have been forced to not go on my leave of absence. And anyway. management has accepted a challenge for me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, making her way down to the ring, and I, as much as I want to agree with Morgan, and as much as I don't want to agree with her, because as much support as I've given her, I'm actually going to have to say that the number one contender, Ayani, is making her way in. She's in the ring right now, and I, as much as I... I, I want to agree with you, Morgan. I'm going to have to say that this is, and I don't want to agree with you. This is one of those things I'm going to have to agree with you is the fact that her being put as the number one challenger is not right because management stepped up and stuck their nose in the contendership, you know, up into who needs to be the number one contender instead of letting the women get into the ring and fight it out themselves. They just basically just handed it to her. I'm going to help with the fact that she's already had a chance before and she screwed that. Okay, well. Scratch that. We all know what happened. Yeah, we do. Most of the time, you, you keep your championship with the health of Miss Sierra over there. Where everybody else tries to work for it the hard way. And right you're, now, you're, Ayana is showing oh. her medal as she's facing against the Puerto Rican hot pepper, uh, Carmen. So you're it's telling me really that Ayani deserves a title shot because management stepped up and said, Here, you're cute. Take it, you deserve it, instead of her working her way up? At least I freaking earned my place at the top. It was a long road getting up to here. And Ayani has just been placed there. And that really ticks me off. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to get this match underway. We have got, like Rowdy said... The Puerto Rican Chili Pepper. <laughs> I kind of like that. That was a good one. And Ayani. And we start off with Carmen just, oh, shoves Ayani back and then turns around and just bitch slaps her. And then Ayani goes in and does and shoves her right back. So I guess right now we're going to kind of have a, a breast bumping contest, so to speak. Oh, this is going to. This is going to erupt into a war and the fans are the beneficiaries. Oh, and Ayani performs another shove and actually ends up pushing Carmen on her backside. And I think Carmen's kind of surprised. Now, Morgan, you've been in the ring with Ayani before. Now, I know that she's not the caliber wrestler you are. And, I mean, there's very few that are. But you have to admit, unfortunately, you have to admit that for her size, she is very sneaky strong. She can surprise you. And the correction to what you said. No, there, there aren't many in my caliber. There are none. In my and Ayani put okay. Carmen back into the corner and then tried to come across with a huge impact and missed, and she actually ended up kissing the turnbuckle. Wow. She, like I've said before, she's actually going, she's going to end up putting her dentist into a new tax bracket after this match is over with.
But I guess Ayana, you know, considering her lifestyle, she's used to having uh, things made out of rubber in her mouth. I don't know. Now, Kayani's already, uh, Carmen's already up to her feet. Ayani gets up frustrated. She acts like she's upset at herself, but she's got to realize Carmen is not a rookie. Oh! Ayani comes back with a nice clothesline and takes Carmen unexpectedly and basically turns her head over heels. Neither one of these wrestlers are rookies in here, uh, BK. And I tell you what, this is how you fight for championships. You go up against people that are very good at the business, not against jobbers. This no, I is a good no, match, and this is how I'm, it goes, I'm, brother. I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that neither one of them are a rookie, but because Ayani has never faced Carmen, Ayani seems to get to still has it in her mindset that since she's never seen her, that she, you know, forgets that this woman is very versed in the ring. She is very knowledgeable. She is coming in here to fight. She's not coming in here to be, you know, to be a jobber. She's not coming up here, here to be a fall girl. She's coming in here to prove that she belongs in that ring with Ayani. I do hope, I do hope one thing. I hope this. I hope this erupts into a war. Oh, and yeah, Carmen with the knee. I've seen lady wrestlers bleed before, and that's cool, man. And Carmen, oh, Carmen's coming off a little bit of taunt after that very nice combination of, of the flips and the uh, and the nip-ups to get out of that wrist lock and put Ayani on her back. Carmen's just kind of doing a little dance around her saying, Aha, little girl, you met your match. Now they both go into the lockup. The common I'm mistake sorry. that Ayani makes a hell of a lot is that when you get frustrated in the ring, you make mistakes. You yeah, save your frustration true. for outside of the ring. You'll notice Ooh, that when I'm in the ring, I am yeah, calm. I, I, and I yes, am you are. Yes, you are. Your that's why you're the for champion. Outside of a match. And that's why you're the champion. And that's why I'm going to beat Ayani again. Okay, and I'm agreeing with you. But Ayani, she come off with a very nice neck breaker and climbs to the ropes very quickly. And just as soon as Carmen gets up looking for her, she comes off with a nice missile drop kick and catches Carmen square. And now Ayani's going for a rolling bridge pin. She's got a one, two. Oh, Carmen, nice kick out. I understand, you know, that missile drop kick, you know, dropped her really quick and put her on her back. But, you know, like I said, Carmen is no slouch in there. So, you know, she's got she got everything it takes to, to you know, I'm, Morgan, don't take this the wrong way. But Carmen does have the, you know, she does have the resume that she could possibly, you know, be a contender for your title one day. And she's showing why because, you know, oh, very nice Irish whip, and then Carmen actually come up with a whip around and ended up putting a nice DDT on the Carmen. Did you see that? That was interesting. I tell you what, uh, Carmen is good at what she does, and you can tell right there she ain't no rookie. No, but anyway, Morgan, as I was saying, Carmen does have the accolades, and she does have the experience that one day she may be able to, you know, to actually legitimately be the very first contender that you have for your title. So I know you're out here watching Ayani, and you and I both disagree with how she got it, but don't overlook Carmen either. No, I think she's one of the first people that this company has introduced to this particular audience that actually quite interests me. And look at this, and Carmen is just taunting Ayani is what she's doing. She's showing how graceful she is and how light on her feet with all of her salsa moves. Ayani comes with the bounce off, and Carmen tried to catch her with the wheel kick, and Ayani ducked under it, goes up and does a moonsault. Oh, it started out as a moonsault and turned into his wheel kick. Now, see, Morgan, now, Morgan, I agree with you. Morgan, you are the best women's... Oh, and Ayani, I'll get back to you in just a second. Ayani, with the cover, one... Oh, she only ended up with a two count on that one. Now, Morgan, I know that you are. But anyway, Morgan, I know you know that you're not worried about Ayani, and I don't think you should be worried about Ayani. I really, really don't. But you know, you have to admit you've been in several matches yourself. You've been in some tough matches, and just one, just one move like that with that roundhouse kick, like Ayani come up with, could end a match. You know, are you prepared for stuff like this? I think you are no matter what, but are you really prepared for what, you know, because it's been 
uh, you know, it's been said before. Like right now, you know, Ayani, just because, you know, she tried to kick Carmen and Carmen caught her, and then Carmen comes off with a nice clothesline, Ayani at any time out there could turn that into an enziguri because she has that very educated a, That was That was not just a clothesline. You see her spin around, that looked more like a discus clothesline. Like uh, old Kerry Von Eric used to do in the WWF. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Morgan, looking at some of this, are you, I mean, are you really prepared for something? Because Aeonic does have a very unique and very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A very erratic style. Are you ready for that? Of course I am. If you think about it, and this is going to be a little bit of a strange analogy, but when you're wrestling someone, it's a little bit like playing a game of chess with them. You need to be ten steps ahead and know exactly where you want to end them end up and judge every single possible move that they could make. So you go into every single match, you head ten times ahead of where your opponent is. And that's what I do. Every single and Car match. And Carmen tried to come across there and catch Ayani sleeping and Ayani caught her in a nice Urangi suplex that just threw Carmen outside the ring, and now Ayani's standing tall, and Carmen's kind of looking up, wondering what the hell just hit her. She gets back to her feet. Morgan, you have you have ten moves ahead of your opponent, as you say, and Sienna for good measure. And <laughs> that's kind of funny to me. I can't lose. Ayani tried to come off with the flying clothesline, and Carmen just stepped back. And as soon as Ayani hit her feet, Carmen caught her with the spear. And ladies and gentlemen, they're fighting outside the ring. This match is erupted into a into an outside the ring brawl. And this is a cat fight. Katie bar the door. And Sarah's counting. She's up to five. We got a nice, good old-fashioned ballroom cat fight going on here. You messed with the wrong Latina. Carmen yelling at her, you messed with the wrong Latina. Well, I have Ayani's, to say, Carmen Ayani's. is making it in the ring to beat that count. That is wise. Ayani, in the meantime, she's getting up slowly. Ayani's just sitting there, or excuse me, Ayani's being laughed at by Carmen right now. Carmen's just pretty much leaving Ayani lying in the, you know, lying outside pretty much like you would, uh, you know, the trash that you took out to the curb for the garbage man to pick up the next day. Ayani is a Japanese lady. It's where she belongs to the honor. Sorry. Ayani climbs back into the ring and goes straight at Carmen and says, I'm still here, Chica, and they go right into a lockup. And right now, both women are trying to jockey for position, seeing that it's going to be very difficult just to take the other one out because they both come, you know, very, very well trained and very highly skilled. Ayani ends up catching Carmen with a kick to the gut and then gave her a suplex over the rope and put a and put Carmen out on the out on the floor. Ayani comes flying across and kicks with a bro kick between the ropes. That's badass man. I'll tell you what, Ayani is showing that she knows her she knows the wrestling business quite well. And now we got Carmen. She won't Carmen. be marked. And now we got Carmen laying out here, looking up at the lights, and Ayani standing tall in the ring. And Sarah's started her count. She's up to three. Carmen's getting up. Very, very unsteady on her legs right now, which you really can't blame her. But she is getting back up into the ring. Referee's up to six. Ayani's yeah, making another rookie mistake. She's got her back to her point. Never good. If you have sense, ah, uh, there you go. She did me. Carmen's back in the ring, facing down Ayani, and Ayani's got a kind of a look on her face, like how in the world is this she getting up after that? Oh, and Carmen comes in with a double knee to the chest. 
Now that's something that's very unorthodox. That's something you don't see all the time. You'd expect like a drop kick or a clothesline, but to come in and just a double knee straight to her chest. Now Carmen's picking up Ayani. Irish whip into the rope. Catches her with a nice tilt a world backbreaker. Ayani's probably going to have to end up going to a chiropractor after this as well. Carmen's just sitting there yelling at her. Ayani's cussing in Japanese. That means one thing. She's frustrated. <laughs> I don't think it has to be Japanese that anybody cusses in. It's any. <laughs> Carmen, the Irish the language, as I can tell you that, that's one thing that unites humanity, if you can believe it. Every nation and every people group cuts it. Carmen ends up putting Ayani into the corner and then goes over and performs a corner choke with her boot. Wow, Ayani has spent a lot of time in that corner. She's had a lot of leather and a lot of everything else in her mouth today. I'll tell you. Carmen is showing something that uh, she's not the she she's no slouch in the ring. And Ayani, right now she's in trouble. The referee started her count, and at the count of three, Carmen broke it up, but not before she dealt out some more damage to Ayani, just keeping her in that corner, just stomping on her. Yeah, and with that foot to the throat, she's trying to get she's trying to mess with her oxygen supply make them make a mistake because uh, not as much oxygen gets to the brain Ayani comes running out in the corner and catches Carmen with a high knee and Carmen goes down and then with a rope shoot Ayani comes back and ends up doing another kitchen sink right to the forehead and I and Carmen is just dazed right now now Ayani's just sitting there screaming what at her dance doing it doing up there on the uh, on the apron of the ring. And Sienna just climbed up on the apron. I don't know what she's doing. She grabs Ayani, holding on to her, giving Carmen a chance to get up. Referee Sarah Jane sees it too. Carmen comes off with a rope shoot coming across, and Ayani ducks down out of the way, and Carmen ends up catching Sienna with a big boot and knocking Sienna down off the apron. Holy shit! Ayani comes in and does a roll up pin and gets a, a two count, a three. Ayani comes out. Did you see that? Did you see that alley oop, that uh, razzmatazzle? My gosh, that was class. I'm glad this is going on YouTube. I'm glad this is going for every person to see because that was an incredible, incredible win right there. Ayani comes up with the win with a three count over Carmen on a miscue. I don't, Morgan, what's going on? Why was Sienna trying to get... What's going on? Sienna, I hope you can hear me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lean in a little bit closer to the mic, just a little bit closer. What the hell was that about, Sienna? If you're going to try and do some shit like that, at least try and freaking make a difference. You ended up getting Ayani to win the freaking match, Sienna. If you're going to act like that, I am not having you ringside next week. Because you'll probably end up making me lose my title and lose the match. I can't have something like that. Well, no ladies and gentlemen, you, ladies and gentlemen oh you just heard God. it. Morgan just told Sienna that she is not going to have Sienna out at ringside for her match next week, which means all that talk that Morgan was doing apparently is going to be true, that she doesn't need anybody to help her win because she is the true champion. Well, we shall see. And fans, remember, that's here. Same bat time, same bat channel.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know, we actually have a VAW official website. It is vauniverse.boards.net. That's where you can go in and find out all the latest news, and you can keep up with your favorite and your least favorite superstars. And we'll tell you what is going on and what to expect from us, and also make sure to check out the calendars that's in there, because we do have a new FPV coming up in a couple of weeks. We've got a lot of stuff going on here at VAW, and that's your site to catch all of it. Also, remember, we do have a marketplace store, so you can get all of your VAW gear. Also, out here by the front door, when you first come in, there is a vendor out there. It is owned by Mr. Bear Outlaw over here, and he does create some very nice shirts for your VAW support for Elite and, of course, for Turbulence. So make sure you go out there and you check out his vendor and purchase a shirt and show your support for us uh in meshed hunts right now the newest one is over it ended three days ago on the 15th of this month but there will be a new one coming up not too long from now and if you want to get involved in it just contact jenny porta who is the vaw vice president and send her a note card and tell her you want to get it on the next hunt rock of fitness is the premier gym for health and fitness in SL provides a fun environment for all ages. You will have access to fitness equipment, free weights, aerobics classes, tai chi, and much, much more. Hot spot clothing for all your hot spot clothing needs. Please check out Candy Trice. And for those of you who know or maybe don't know, Candy is actually a former women's champion and a VAW Hall of Famer. And I do believe that she has not set out, but she has actually succeeded in creating the most innovative mesh and non-mesh clothing for men and women alike here in SL. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our second match that is going to be coming up here in just a very shoot a very few short minutes but before that if all of you were here last week you noticed that miss pammy one of the most classiest women here in vaw finally knocked some sense into that little ungrateful girl lucky and lucky is now her is now pammy's assistant well pammy decided to reward her by taking her on a vacation and we're supposed to have some video that shows how they're enjoying their vacation and Pammy has the well-deserved time off coming and how Lucky has fallen into her role. So we're going to be getting that video going up very, very soon. But we want to go ahead and when that until that video starts, we want to talk about the next match. And the next match, I truly believe, is where the Southern Renegade Danny Boy is getting screwed over because... Two weeks in a row. Well, oh, never mind. I think we got the video coming up. We'll get into the second match here in just a second. I personally, I want to see exactly how Pammy and uh, Lucky are doing. So whoever, you know, is not being paid properly back here, pay attention. Get somebody who knows what they're doing. Go ahead and roll the video. Let's see how, let's see how the lovely Pammy and the, the little girl Lucky is doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much says it all. Pammy is there to enjoy herself, and Lucky, once again, is lagging behind. She's going to have to step it up. You know, I, I really hate to say it, but, I mean, I granted, she needs to be in that position because she's not much of a wrestler. But yet, at the same time, Pammy probably could have chose a better assistant. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into the next match, Rowdy. You have the Southern Pride thing, and you have this Florida thing going on because I know you and Danny Boy are both from Florida. I know you don't agree with what he does in the ring or you agree with some of his antics, but even you have to admit, because Dave Mack and Red, for whatever reason, can't turn around and have a decent match, and they can't figure out how to end the match properly and have a true number one contender for Danny Boy's U.S. title. Now, for some odd reason, Mr. Nightgown in the back come up with this brilliant idea to actually put Danny Boy in a handicap tag match against Dave Mack and Red. Tell me exactly exactly where that's fair for Danny Boy because he did absolutely nothing wrong. He's done nothing but been a great champion since he won the title. 
I'll tell you what. First and foremost, you can tell by the stars and the bars on my back that, brother, I am a southerner. That is for sure. Danny Boy Firehawk, as you say, he may he may not deserve this kind of match, but it's going to be a tough one, that's for sure. But that said, you know, Danny Boy is known for going into honky talks and bars and starting fights and ending them too. If there was a championship for beating the crap out of a bunch of drunks in a honky tonk, he'd have the belt. Now in the wrestling ring, Danny Boy Firehawk is tough, but his opponents, Red Blackheart of the Blackheart family. I remember a while ago, if you faced one Blackheart, you'd face three or four of them. But Red has gotten out on his own, and he showed. He's also from Florida, by the way. He's also a Southerner, and he's shown that he's tough. The well, strong man, Dave Maclanata, he is tough. I have faced him in the ring myself. I can tell you I've never been hit as hard by anyone on the planet. This fella, Dave Maclanata, is one of the strongest men in professional wrestling. Well, I will agree. With, well, I disagree with one thing. You said you've never been hit harder by anyone on the planet. I would probably say your wife has probably hit you a little bit harder than Dave Mack has. But if you remember, Dave Mack and Red, it's going to be it's going to be interesting just to watch to see if those two can even coexist. And see, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Danny just sit back in the corner and let those two end up beating the hell out of each other because they're not going to, you know, they're not going to remember that they are supposed to be as a cohesive team. But the reason why this match was made was because management decided that it was Danny Boy's fault that there was a no contest last week. I don't know exactly what match that management was watching, but Dave Mack was sitting over there by us doing his own commentary, not doing anything, sitting over here sipping his moonshine like a great renegade should and he gets not he gets ran into by red and danny was just defending himself and he's be, and danny boy is being blamed for the reason why this is coming up and this is one of those things that i say i can't stand whoever put these people in charge in management they need to go back and they need to look at their credentials and make sure that they wasn't written on some kind of sesame street diploma and written in crayon because i'm beginning to wonder about some of the intelligence of the people who are in charge of us around here any way you look at this this match, be it a punishment or what, I say this match is going to be pretty darn interesting. It's going to be a test of Danny Boy Firehawk's resolve and metal in the ring. It's also the two fellas he's going to be going against. Each one of them are championship material, and each one of them at that time has held a VAW championship. It's like three former world champions fighting out, fighting against one another. You might as well have you might as well have three former world champions. It'd be like AJ Styles. I mean, excuse me. It'd be like uh, CM Punk fighting Randy Orton and uh, Triple H. All former world champions. I'm just throwing out a couple on the top of my head. And that's how it is, brother. That's what this match is going to be like. Well, like I said, this is really going to be interesting because you had Dave Mack and you got Red, two very accomplished superstars who for the past two weeks have been going at each other's throats to decide who's going to be the number one contender, and now they're being teamed up. Now, what I think Danny Boy should do, and I, this is, and I can't tell the man how to fight because he's been in the ring a lot longer than I have. He's, he's accomplished a lot more than I have. But if I was Danny, I would see what I could do to get those two going at each other and let them beat the hell out of each other and then come in, get a quick win, and go back and uh, – Crack me up on another jar of moonshine. Because if he does that, I'm going back there with the man. Because it's going to be very interesting to find out if these two opponents can actually coexist and put their egos to the side, which, as we know, they really probably can't because I'm surprised they could, they're could. they both being able to stand in the ring at the same time as big as their egos are. Well, they've been in the business long, and long enough that uh, I think they can go ahead and exist together in the ring as a force. We shall well, see. I, 
Well, you saw Red come in, and the first thing he talked, you know, the first thing he did was told Damac that belt's mine. See, he's not even con- worried. He's not even concentrating on the fact he's got to, that they've got to be a team tonight. He's still talking about his individual accolades. See, they're going back and forth. You know, Red called him a Welsh. Dave's calling him a dumb American hick. I mean, these two are not going to be able to coexist. I think this is going to be a real easy ride for Danny Boy tonight. I sure hope it is because the man deserves a break. So you got the two partners going at jawing back and forth with each other. Danny Boy could just walk in right now, perform his finisher, get a pin because they're not concerned about each other, and walk out. Be the easiest match he ever had. See, he's standing back off in the corner, letting them two argue. Well, if two fellers have bad blood against each other, and they're going to be your opponents in a three-way, uh, <laughs> let them fight it out, and then you turn around and pin either one you want, depending on how. How hard they fought. I mean, that's just common sense and smart. Well, you got Sarah going over and she's patting down Sutton. She's patting down Danny Boy, making sure that he's clean. And she's asking him for his belt. You know, doing the, the normal, you know, pre match rituals. Well, this Looks may like- be a match, but I tell you, I'm not treating it like a regular match where wrestling is important. This is going to be a war, so throw out the rule book, and let's see some blood. Can't throw out the rule book, because the past two weeks, every time they try to throw out the rule book, there's a no contest. Anyway, it looks like Sarah's satisfied that all the men come into the ring again. She says they're ready. And it looks like we're ready to get this match underway. And we're going to start out with Dave Mack and Danny Boy. Now, none of these men are strangers to each other. But it wasn't too long ago that it was actually Danny Boy and Dave Mack that was in a very crucial triple threat match. So their little rivalry that they've had is actually very fresh. And we know, and you know, we know how you Southern boys are there, Rowdy. You know, you guys never forget anything, especially when it comes to a feud. I mean, look at the, you know, look at the McCoys. And Dave Mack comes oh, right off it. Fields and the McCoys. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. West Virginia. Yeah, well. And Dave Mack comes off and catches Danny Boy right off the bat with a spear and then turns around and does a series of ground pounds. Dave Max come out to make a statement tonight by saying, I'm not going to play around. It looks like he wants to try to finish Danny Boy off by himself so he can send a partner to not just Danny Boy, but also to his partner that's saying that I am the man in the ring. Dave Mack, Irish whip, and puts Danny Boy into the corner. Now Danny, now Dave Mack backs up just a little bit. Backs up a little bit more. Looks like he's measuring. Goes running across. Catches him with a nice corner splash. And that just put... Oh, and Danny Boy down. Face down after being just laid into that corner. You can see the indents on his back from the turnbuckles. (laughs) So Red uh, goes ahead and, and, and criticizes his tag team partner. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and then his tag team partner jumps up on the ropes to showboat instead of going and keeping the pressure on a veteran and champion like Danny Boy. Now Dave performs a tag on Big Red, and I guess he's pretty much saying, well, if you think you can do better, you're going to have to show me. Red's saying, watch this. And, you know, me, I'm actually from Missouri, so I would be the same way. I'd be like, you know, don't tell me. you got to show me. Red climbs into the ring. <laughs> Dave Max saying, you show me, you bore me already. Wow, that's a way to be a cohesive unit. Danny Boy manages to get up wobbling. He staggers back into the corner right now. The ropes are the only thing holding him up. Red comes running across and catches him with his own corner splash. That's two in a row from two very large men. And, of course, now Red's going to come over and he's going to give his tag team partner a little bit of what for. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. 
they both perform great moves. They're doing what they have to. High impact because you got to keep a big man like Danny Boy down. But their mistake is they're worried about showing the other one up, and that's going to give Danny Boy that little window that he needs that he's going to end up into this match, and he's going to end up coming out with the, with the win in this one if they're not careful. Well, Danny Boy's got one of the strongest legs in wrestling. When he hits you with that, that super kick of his, that's all she wrote. Red goes over and locks up with Danny, pulls him out of the corner, drags him out. Trying to get some leverage. There's, you know, there's not much of a size difference in him. You know, Danny, Danny Boy is a very strong, to be honest, he's a strong redneck. He's, he's one of them southern fed boys. He's one of them homegrown boys. He's very strong, so it's very hard to get leverage on him, even though Red comes up with a very nice wrist lock. And now he comes back in with some wrist lock strikes with the elbow. And Danny Boy just stood up for a second and just shoved Red back and put Red back into the corner. And I think they kind of took Red off guard because he figured that with those strikes, he probably took a little bit of arm strength out. But I think Danny used more of his legs. And you said before, Danny Boy's got some of the strongest legs in the VAW. Red comes back with some more elbow strikes to the back of the arm, trying to weaken that arm so that there's no power that can be used by Danny. And comes off with a nice big boot after a rope shoot. We got Red standing up, just looking over at Dave Mac, grinning, just basically smirking at him, saying that, you know, can you top this? Looking over a downed Danny boy. I'd turn around and teleport a friend in because I don't want to teleport him in the ring. <laughs> That's okay. You can face the other way. You never look better. So anyway, so Red comes over, and it looks like there's a little bit of John and back and forth between him and Dave. Red telling him that's how it's really done, and he goes in. Right now, they're working great together as a team. They're, I mean, granted, they're not on the same page as far as who's doing what, but they are working as a cohesive unit, doing some tagging and out, keeping the fresh man in there, and trying to keep Danny Boy off his game so he doesn't know exactly which one he has to face. Dave Mack comes in, is picking Danny Boy up. You know, Danny Boy being as big as he is, you know, it's not exactly easy to pick up all that weight, so it's almost like picking up dead weight. And Dave Mack, he is a very intelligent man, and he throws him with an Irish whip, and here comes the rope rebound. Oh, and Dave Mack catches Danny Boy and performs a textbook power slam. And Red's just a weird like so. This is going to be very interesting. Because I, I just see these two trying to want, worry more about one-upping each other than they are worried about winning the match. And Dave Mack goes down and pulls Danny Boy up into a sitting position. He goes for a neck wrench, and he's just always oh, wrenching down on that neck. Be careful. He could end up you know, not exactly being a chiropractor, and that could actually dislocate something. And Danny Boy could end up in traction. Let me just say one thing. They gonna they gonna try to one up each other. They figuring Danny's just a slouch and either one can beat him. But they better be careful. Oh, Danny boy, Firehawk. I'm sure he knows what's going on too, and that's gonna turn around and bite them in the ass. Yeah, and now Dave Matt comes out with a series of neck rich strikes pounded down across Danny Boy's chest. But you're right. I mean, it's okay. I guess it's okay to be a little competitive between, you know, between tag team partners because you see one do something, you want to one up, and that just puts more punishment on your opponent. But they're dealing with Danny Boy. He is the U.S. champion. And Danny Boy comes back with a counter with a jawbreaker. And now, oh, the tide has turned. Red's just kind of shaking his head like, you know, Dave Mack, you know, you're showing off a little bit too much. You wouldn't work, you wouldn't concentrate on what you're supposed to be doing. And Danny Boy gets up, and he's picking up Dave Mack. Red's just kind of smirking like, you know, don't expect me to do anything for you. Lily's screaming at Dave Mack to get up, but right now he's holding that bottom jaw that just got just rattled across the top of Danny Boy's head. Is that blood coming out of his mouth? Did he bite his tongue? That's either he bit his tongue or whenever Danny Boy put his chin into the top of his head, he broke a tooth. 
And now Danny Boy comes in and performs a nice wrist lock and then goes through a hammer lock, comes back with the kick to the gut with the DDT. Talk about a nice series of chain moves. Kept Dave Mack off his guard. Hit him with four moves, and Dave Mack probably thought he was only being hit with one. It happened so quick. And now Red's actually cheering for Danny Boy. He's saying, give him a good one, Renegade. He's actually cheering for Danny Boy to beat up on his partner. Well, now, that's an interesting development. And Red's just kind of standing there, just pacing back and forth. Looks like he's not really interested in helping his partner out. Danny Boy with the Irish whip, Dave with the rope shoot bounce, comes back and nice big boot by Danny, but it gets blocked and Dave Mack actually catches him with the DDT. Dave Mack actually went into the broken dreams with a counter for the big boot. He saw it coming. I guess that's one of those advantages to, you know, knowing who your opponent is and as many matches as it is, you can actually sometimes get on the same page and it actually look like you're actually in your opponent's head. He schooled him. And now Dave Mack going for the pin. He ends up with a two count. And Red's just kind of standing over there with his heads on it with his hands on his hips, looking at his partner like, okay, you just, you know, great, great move, you know, you'd come out of it. You know, I need to get into the ring. And Dave Mack smirking and shaking his head no. And Dave Mack comes over to tag his partner Red, and Red, oh, I guess he slips. He slipped down, I guess he slipped down off the apron. And now he's just looking down at Red, saying, like, what the hell? Well, Red said he's looking for a cigarette. Sorry, Red, I don't smoke. Nope, I don't smoke either. Now, if you wanna if you wanna blunt, I'll give you one of them. <laughs> wow. Dave just yelled at Red that you're cheaper than a Thai hooker. Not exactly how sure Dave Mack would know that considering the beautiful woman he has at his side. And he turns around, took oh. his eye boy, and Danny Boy got him with a super kick. He connected and that was I tell you, nicely done by guys. You could see this Dave McLenotta's head rock back and forth. Oh, didn't catch him enough to get the three count, but he definitely rattled him on that one because he was too busy yelling at his partner, worried about what his partner was doing as opposed to keeping his attention on Danny Boy. Danny Boy's trying to catch his breath, and he comes up. And performs a big boot and catches Red not paying attention because Red was glaring down at his partner. Now it's just Danny Boy and Dave Mack up in the, the only two that are in the ring right now. I can't believe that super kick did not do the trick. I'm surprised that super kick of his did not knock out the well strong man. Well, he's not known as the well strong man for nothing. I mean, he is a very strong individual, and Danny Boy's been on the receiving end of all the punishments, so one kick like that is not really shocking. But at the same time, with all of his attention being focused on his partner, what his partner was doing, I'm surprised it didn't do more damage. And now Danny Boy picks him up, got him straight up in the air, got the delayed suplex, and comes crashing down. Oh, talk about high impact. You come off that super kick and then you go into one of the Danny Boy's delayed suplexes. And Danny Boy holds you up there for a reason. He holds you up there so all the blood can rush down to the top of your head and almost give you like a head rush headache. And then you come crashing down and all that weight and all that momentum just down right on the back of your neck and on your shoulders causes a lot of damage. Well, I tell you, uh, Danny Boy Firehawk is tall too. So when he picks a person up for vertical suplex, you might as well almost be getting it off of the top turn. And Danny Boy went over to pick up Dave Mack, and I think out of instinct, Dave Mack just kind of threw his legs out there, got a couple of kicks, to, got a kick to the leg and a kick to Danny Boy's thigh, but I don't really think it had much effect. 
Although Dave Mack just performs an Irish whip and puts Danny Boy into his and Red's corner, that is not good. That is not a good side of town for him to be on. He's got his both of his opponents over there, so it's basically almost a two on one. You know, they always say in tag team matches you want to cut the ring in half. Well, this also goes. You know, it also holds true for matches like this. And Danny Boy, he is gonna have to shake the cobwebs. He's gonna have to get out of that part of the ring. And here comes Dave Mack performing another corner splash. That is the third one that Danny Boy has received today. I don't know how many more of those he can handle because these are not little men that are crashing into him. And uh, he tags in red. And I'll tell you, it's going to be something to see what happens. Well, Red was sitting over here pacing back and forth, and I think he was getting a little frustrated with Dave Mack because he should have tagged him in a long time ago. So Red figures, well, if he's going to take his time getting me in the ring, I might as well you know, take my time getting in the ring. So he was going to take him a cigarette break. But anyway, we got Red pick, helping Danny Boy up, shoves him, and puts him back into the turnbuckle. Are they going to try to go for a fourth corner splash on Danny Boy? Sarah's over there yelling at him to get out of the corner, but I really don't think these guys are going to pay too much attention. They've got him in there, you know, got him where they want him. They got him backed into a corner, two on one, and there goes Red with those big ham hocks he's got for fists, and he is just laying into Danny Boy, catching him in the ribs. And then he comes shooting across with another corner splash, but he catches his partner with his with the errant arm like a clothesline. And now we got Dave Mag laying on the floor, Red standing up and standing over the U.S. champion Danny Boy. Lily's yelling at Red, you know, what the fuck is wrong with you? Such language from such a lovely lady, but I guess in this instance it would be okay to understand that. And Red is pulling Danny Boy out of the corner. I know, Lily. And now Red is going to the vicious stomps, pulls Danny Boy up, and now Dave is climbing into the ring without being tagged. Dave going for the full throttle. He nailed it. He sure the did. We, what the fuck was that, man? And now Dave is going to start yelling at Red? <laughs> you think you're better than me, you little fuck? I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm better. I know I'm better than me. you. You want me to show you, really? Yeah. What are you yeah. going to do about it? I'm going to do about it. Here. Ugh. Shit, hang on. You forgot who you fucking with. You got the two partners jawing back and forth, and Dave Mack just shoves Red back into the corner, and he's actually going after his partner. They should take – oh, see, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is going to work out to Danny Boy's advantage because he got hit with the full throttle, but he's got time to recuperate. You want money, bitch? Oh. And Red comes out with a super kick. Danny, he's all yours. And Danny Boy gets to his feet, and Red tells Danny he's all yours after laying his partner out with a super kick. That's the second super kick that Dave Mack has caught tonight. One was from Danny Boy, and one was from Red. And Danny's just looking around like, what the hell's going on? Well, hell, after this match, old Dave Mack and I are only be able to eat stuff like uh, Jello and... Uh... They're probably going to have to wire his jaw shut. And Danny's still suffering the after effects of that full throttle, and Dave Mack was actually able to get up. They both kind of get to their feet at the same time. Dave Mack catches Danny with a kick to the gut, and now they're trading off punches left and right. Now it's another kick to the gut by Dave Mack. Red hasn't completely left yet. He's standing at the bottom of the ramp. I'm not sure exactly. He just told Danny Boy he was all yours, so I don't know why he's still there. And Dave catches Danny Boy in a doomsday device. And he pulls Danny Boy out to the center of the ring. That makes Lily very happy. And Red's just kind of walking out of the arena, and he keeps looking over his shoulder. 
Dave goes for the pin, hooks the leg. One, two, and a three. Ladies and gentlemen, winner by pinfall. Even though he walked out, he was still on the opposing team. We have Dave Mack and Ben Red that just scored a pinfall over the U.S. champion Danny Boy, but it was actually Dave Mack that scored the pinfall. So that's going to have to look into the eyes of the ever so great management we have around here. That may even that may even propel Dave into the number one contendership spot right there because he actually pinned the champion. was inevitable. I have been in the doom stage of advice. It knocks you out cold. You're waking up about several, about a minute or two later wondering where you are, what you're doing, and what's going on. That is a devastating move. I've never seen anybody get up from the doom stage device yet. Well, I mean, Danny Boy, you're absolutely right, man. I, I agree with you. You're still the champion, but right there may have just given you who is actually going to be your number one contender because I think that what Red was trying to do was trying to prove to Dave Mack that he didn't belong in there and he you know, can't do things by himself, and it actually ended up backfiring, and Dave Mack actually come out with a win. This is going to be very interesting right now because – Dave Mack and Red have been going after the number one contender spot, and because Red walked out on this, that might he might have actually screwed up and actually given Dave Mack what what they both have been going for. He may have screwed himself on this one, but I think that when it comes down to it in a one on one match, I still think Danny Boy is going to be the U.S. champion for a very long, long time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the DMMC, which is the Drifters of Mayhem motorcycle club they have a sim where you can take your bike and you can enjoy a three level custom built track filled with twists turns jumps and a six gate time track if you feel like bowling or playing biker ball or around the golf they also have that they've got shooting ranges paintball and zombies for all your shooting enjoyment they've got a demolition derby area a biker obstacle course and much much more lots of shopping and custom bike builders are on the sim as well they have a concert area they've got a drive-in theater with new movies every week they have commercial and residential residential rentals built to suit every need go and visit them and schedule your own MCs right out or if you're interested in joining AMC and you might be interested in the DMMC please contact Baden Paneer you ever you own a business here in SL would you like for it to be advertised here at the VAW dome all you got to do is get in touch with the fucktard owner Mr. Vince Aftermath and for 200 lindens a month we will make sure that you are sponsored we will make sure that you are taken care of and we'll make sure that you are advertised the right way also did you know that you could play football in sl the coalition football league also known as the cfl is the premier football league for all your football related desires please contact veronica gears for more information now Roddy, we know what's been going on with uh you know we know what's been going on with Darian and with Mr. Nail Nightgown, you know, Darian's been doing exactly what he's supposed to have been doing. He's been, you know, making appearances. He's been touring around the world. He's been, you know, promoting the company. He's been the face of the company because he's the VAW champion. And Vent and now knows this stuff. And yet now keeps coming out here week after week after the match that they had at our last FPV, No Justice. Or excuse me. And comes out and actually has the nerve to say that Daring is not living up to his duties when I know for a fact that Nile is not returning the emails, he's not reading the emails, he's not checking voice messages, he's not returning phone calls, and yet he wants to come out and say that he's, you know, from what the rumors and stuff I've been hearing, he's actually got something possibly in mind for Daring that Daring doesn't show up tonight. I'm hoping Daring does. I think Daring is here as a matter of fact. That's what I've been told is that he, you know, had to make, he had to cancel everything else, take his private jet back here so he could come out here and meet with Mr. Nightgown. I hope this finally does happen. And he actually comes out here and actually shuts Nile up once and for all. And Nile has to apologize to him for all the crap he's been saying and needs to apologize to him for all the negative negativity that he's been throwing towards him. And now we got Mr. Nightgown coming out here. And why does he have a title around his waist? He is not even the champion. 
Darian the Great is the BAW champion. Why is Nile even wearing it? Uh, whatever, just hit, yeah, whatever. Go ahead. Thank you for your kind words, as always, BK. It's always a pleasure to work alongside you. Uh, as most of you are aware, Darian the Great De Silva is not one of my favorite people at all. Uh, he's disrespected me, he's disrespected the whole of VAW, he's disrespected former champions, and I don't feel he's championship material. To go on top of that, he has now decided to go AWOL for the last couple of weeks, and has not shown up to Turbulence to represent the brand as a champion should. Therefore, I am inviting him out tonight to explain his absence and to ask what is he going to do to make up for it. So, Darian, if you're backstage, please come out now so we can sort this matter out. Well, are you coming out, Darian? Are you there? Ah, once again, Mr. De Silva flatters to deceive, and he isn't here as a champion should be. He isn't here to represent the band. He's disrespected. The fans now, alongside management, alongside former champions, by not even coming out and gracing us with his great presence. Therefore, there's only one thing I can do, really. If he isn't showing up, even when management requests it, then I am hereby denouncing Darian De Silva as the VAW champion and stripping him of the VAW title belt. However, I did have a feeling that he was not going to be here tonight. And even the most eagle-eyed amongst you have noticed that I am carrying another VAW title belt over my shoulder, which I am now reinstating. Therefore, next week, on the 25th of September at 3pm SLT, at our down for FPV, alongside the Temptations title match between Ayani and Morrigan, alongside the now triple threat match for the United States title between Dave McLenara, Red Blackheart and the champion Danny Boy Firehawk. We will have a match between wrestlers that I feel deserving to crown a new VAW champion. So next week at Downfall we will have a new w VAW champion. So I encourage you all to be here to see who that may be. For now, folks, it is on to our main event, where one demon will be laid to rest. I will see you all again next week. What exactly the hell is that? Darian's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's living up to the obligations of being champion, traipsing all over the world, being the face of this company. And because he can't show up as soon as Nile says that Nile is going to strip him of his title, and then he's just going to name two people just to wrestle, and he's going to throw, what the hell is going on here?
What exactly? No, this is ridiculous. No, Darian's gotten screwed on this one. Darian, that's a blatant abuse of power by Mr. Nile Nightgown, stripping a man of a title because he's out doing what the company wants him to do. This is total bullshit. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous, screwing a, a great talent like Darian like that. Oh, my God. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that you can rate this show by shouting out the word rate and you'll get a little icon you come in and you can rate the show per segment also if you haven't done it yet you can shout out the word HUD and just go click on the little icon and let our great production crew do your camera angles for you so you don't have to worry about doing anything that means if anything was happening backstage you'd get the chance on that now ladies and gentlemen it is time for the most anticipated main event that has come about since I myself have been here at Turbulence. We are going to finally find out who is the demon in VAW. You have got the demon. You've got the demon of death. It is finally coming down to this. It is finally head to head. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. This is the one everybody's here to see. This is a casket match. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what a casket match is, which I know I'm not saying people are or people aren't, but just to get everybody caught up, there's no pinfalls, there's no countouts, there's no disqualifications. The way that you win this match is to basically render your opponent just basically unconscious and helpless, drag them up that ramp, open up that casket at the top of it, throw them into the casket, and close the lid. That's all there is to it. This is going to be no holds barred. This is for everything. This is for all the bragging rights. This is it. This is These two finally coming head to head after weeks and weeks and weeks of trying to get in each other's heads, of trying to turn around and trying to say that one is the demon, the other one says no you're not. All the mind games, all the appearing out of nowhere, the different color smokes, Everything is going to culminate, and it's coming to a head tonight. Watch out, sir. He popped up behind you there, girl. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, right now in the ring, from parts unknown, always comes out to the very cool and the very, very creepy red smoke we have from parts unknown. We actually have the demon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we got just a few more minutes before this match actually starts. This is one of those things where I'm going to say, if you got anybody doing not doing anything right now, you need to TP them in now. This is going to be one. I don't care if they're a true wrestling fan. I don't care if they're a bandwagon wrestling fan. I don't care if they've ever been to a match in their life. This is one they are not going to want to miss. I have been waiting for this for a week. I mean, I'm a true fan at heart. I'm a, I, that, I'm a fan first and foremost. Yes, I'm a commentator, but this is one of those that I've been looking forward to, and I'm actually honored, and, a, and I know it's a privilege, and I'm excited to actually call this one. I have been waiting for this one. I I've been waiting for the demon to get his hands on the demon of death, you know, for the demon of death to quit doing all of his running and to quit doing all of his ducking. The demon is finally going to be able to prove that he is the only demon in BAW.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the ring, using the eerie blue smoke. There's several places you can say that the man is from. He has been around for a long time. You can say he's from Death Valley. You can say he's from the darkest corners of your mind. You can say he's from the depths of hell. It does not matter, but he does believe that he is the demon here in BAW, and that is the demon of death. This one is going to be one for the ages, ladies and gentlemen, and you're going to see it right here on Thursday Night Turbulence. Nobody else is going to be able to provide this kind of action for you, and this is what you can come to expect from us each and every week. This one has been built up. It's been anticipated. I've gotten IMs over the past week, people wanting to know exactly what I think, wanting to know if I have any predictions. My prediction is that the demon is going to come out on top because I think he's hungry. I think he's got something that he really needs to prove. But this one, to be perfectly honest, this is anybody's, this is anybody's match. This is one that is going to, once and for all, determine who can solely claim to be the demon in VAW. And nobody else can offer this. Looks like the referee is getting ready. Just waiting on her to give me the signal. Just now remember, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a no holds barred. This is no falls. This is no count outs, no disqualifications. The only way to win is to get your opponent up that ramp and get them put into that casket at the top on the stage and shut the lid. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it all happens. I got my thing what the summer fuck here about it. Adam's fan the Christmas show. Sarah's calling both men into the center of the ring, asking if they're ready to go, and it looks like they both are. They're both just steadily just walked right to the center, and they've not taken their eyes off each other since they've gotten in the ring. They go straight into a lockup. <clears throat> and the demon of death goes into a nice wrist lock. And right now, because these two have not actually been in the ring together, this is more of a filling out process. They are not, he's not trying to win the match because he can't. Oh, goes for a nice hammer lock. Rinses down on it. I mean, that's not the case. Most of these guys, most of these guys have been, have been trying to freak each other out. And the demon just keeps rinsing down, and finally the demon of death says, screw this, and he turns it around, spins the demon around, and catches him in his own hammerlock. And I know that the demon wears a mask, but you can just look at the look on his, in his eye, and you can tell he's grinning. It's like he's enjoying this. The demon of death goes in and catches him in a side headlock. Now, these are not moves that are going to be used to win the match. This is more of a filling out process, trying to figure out what's going to be the best leverage. They're both equally, they're both equally strong. They're both equally matched up. So this is actually going to end, this is going to actually be in more of a match of who's got more stamina. And the demon comes out of the headlock and performs an Irish whip on the demon of rage. And the demon of rage comes back from the butt. He comes in with a nice shoulder block and catches the demon off guard. Put all of his weight and all of his height behind it. Almost like running into a brick wall. Demon just kind of shakes it off and he gets up and he's just got this look on his face. You can see it like he's grinning. I mean, you can't see his face, his mouth, but you can see it through his eyes. When you see somebody smile, you can see the, the eyes change. And Demon gets up and catches the Demon of Death in a gut kick. And you can see the Demon, nice Irish whip, puts the Demon of Death into the corner. The Demon 
goes all the way across the ring into the other corner, sizing him up. Comes running. The chicken or the egg? What come first, the sin or the demon? <laughs> <laughs> and the demon comes back across and catches him with the demon strike, catches the demon of death square in the jaw. And the demon is just looking down, just kind of giving him this glare. like a. Dem it's almost like he's trying to pierce into his soul. And I don't think the demon of death has a soul, to be honest with you. The demon's taking his time in this. I think he's enjoying the fact, which I do believe he should. He's enjoying the fact that he has the demon of death down. And not many people have been able to do this to him. Now he reaches down and helps him up by picking him up. Whether he wants to get up or not, the demon says, screw this. It's time for some more punishment. And the demon of death comes up and just shoves the demon off of him. And he comes in with a nice punch that catches the demon flush. And another punch. And the demon's just standing up looking at him like, can I have another? And now the demon of death catches the demon with a kick to the gut. And it comes off and catches him with a big boot. Now we got the demon on the canvas. The demon of death standing tall. And now the demon of death is pretty much doing to the demon what was being done to him. He's looking over him and kind of giving this demonic smirk. <laughs> now the demon of death moves in behind the demon. He's picking him up. And this is one of those times where I'm very rarely ever going to give the demon of death any advice because the man has been in the ring for since you know for a long time, but he is not facing an opponent like the demon who has the same capabilities he does. They're both equally strong, and this is not going to be just a one move win. This is going to have to be. This is going to be a fight. And now we got the demon off in the corner, and the demon of death comes in with a corner splash, catches the demon, and the demon just kind of falls out of the corner. Now he's face down with the. Demon just the demon of death just glaring down at him, and now the demon is being picked up. Oh, and the demon comes up with an eye rake. I don't care how big you are. You get a thumb to the eye, and that's going to throw you off your game. And now the demon comes in with another gut kick. He grabs the demon of death and Irish whip into the rope. Demon of death on the rebound and gets, oh, gets caught in a sidewalk slam. Wow, talk about high impact and a lot of weight coming down. The demon is doing exactly what he has to do by any means necessary. He wants to prove that he is, he's proven that he wants to win this match and that he is the only demon. He comes off with the, after a rope shoot and hits with the knee drop. And the demon of death, even though he's not doing his natural, his normal sit up, he is actually sitting up pretty quickly and the demon's kind of shaking his head. And the demon comes off with a nice snap suplex and actually ends up throwing the demon of death about three quarters of the way across the ring. And now the demon's positioned himself over into the corner. He's not a high flyer, but he's going up anyway and he's going to a top turnbuckle with the demon of death laying down. And he comes off with the flying elbow and connects. 
Wow, talk about going to the high risk moves. That is not something the demon normally does. And now the demon just stare, just glaring down at Demon of Death one more time, and now he's picking him up, which, you know, picking up dead weight, that's not exactly an easy task. Oh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Just got a few little technical problems here. I think the aliens did come to get Rod. But anyway, we end up with the Demon of Death putting the demon out on the floor with a very nice clothesline over the top rope. And now that they're out on the floor, they're actually closer to the casket. And the demon of death is now trying to pick up the demon, and the demon comes up and shoves the demon of death backwards. Got a little bit too close to those steps. I'm surprised he didn't get shoved into us, but luckily he caught himself. And now the demon catches the demon of death with a kick to the gut. And the demon of death comes charging at the demon and gets caught. And what a nicely performed Samoan drop for the demon. And that has got the demon of death lying on his back on the floor. And if anybody knows, there is no protection out there whatsoever. It is pretty much just like a very, very thin layer of padding. And it's all concrete. And now the demon grabs the demon of death by his foot and he's dragging him by his feet, which means his head's popping all over the place. Might knock some sense into him for a change. He's dragging him up the ramp towards... The, he's dragging him up towards that casket. Referee's following in behind to make sure that everything is done the right way. He's got him close. This could be it. He's picking up the demon of death. One more move could actually end this. And the demon of death stands up and catches the demon off guard with the punch. And now they're sitting here and they are trading punches back and forth very precariously up next to that coffin. And the demon of death catches the demon with another gut kick. And that puts a little bit of separation for the demon of death to catch his breath. And the demon is just one half a step away from lying or sit, at least sitting down in the coffin. And it's like the demon is just sitting there contemplating on what he wants to do. Does he want to end it now or does he want to dish out more punishment? He's got the demon, you know, quote unquote, on the ropes. And if he's going to finish it, he needs to finish it now. He doesn't need to wait around because if he does, that's going to give the demon that one little window of opportunity. And the demon of death is going to be looking up. And the last thing he's going to see is that 
the lid on that coffin closed, and the demon catches him in a choke slam. But yet he gets reversed, and the demon ends up behind him and puts the demon to death in a sleeper hold. What a counter, ladies and gentlemen. The demon of death actually grabbed the demon by the neck, getting ready to perform a choke slam to put him into the coffin, and the demon countered it and slipped in behind him and has got him in a sleeper hold. And now he is dragging him, showing that he has full control. And you can see the demon of death gasping for air, trying everything that he can get as much air into his body and into his lungs so he doesn't pass out. The demon is just re he's just wrenching down on that. And now he performs, got him up, he goes from a sleeper hold, slips his hands behind his neck into a full Nelson. He is trying to just take every ounce of life out of the demon of death, and it seems to be working right now. This is not the kind of match that I expected. And the demon comes off with the skull crushing finale and actually puts in the demon of death into the coffin. And the lid has been closed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a clear cut winner. And once and for all, it has been proven who is the demon in VAW. Ladies and gentlemen, winner by closed casket is the demon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed one for the ages. Now we have a clear cut person in order that can be determined to be. Wait a minute. He opens up the casket. He was going to pull the demon of death out, and the demon of death is not there. The demon of death's body is not there. And the demon's just kind of looking around. I mean, the demon's happy that he won, but he's looking around, and the demon of death is gone. Does that mean that this is the last of the demon of death? Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget, next week, our FPV, we have got several title matches. Also, a quick reminder, in case anybody wants to be a part of, if anybody wants to be part of the commentary team, if anybody wants to train to be a professional wrestler here in VAW, right behind me, there is an application giver. Grab the application, fill it out, send it back, and start your journey on a very fun way to spend a couple hours in SL here in VAW in the ring outside the ring as a valet as a manager whatever it is that you want to do we will definitely bring you in and we will make sure that you get exactly what you deserve and make sure that you have the time of your life ladies and gentlemen once again I am BK I want to thank you all for coming out to turbulence definitely want you all to come back next week for our FPV it's going to be one hell of an event you already know it we've got the US title on the line we've got the v we're going to crown a new VAW champion. We're going to have the Temptations title on the line. There's going to be a whole lot going on. You don't want to miss it all. I want to see you all right back here at the same time next week. And I will hope that you all have a great rest of your week. I hope you all have a great weekend. And I would definitely see you all back here. It has been a pleasure as always. Have a good night. See you all very soon. This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links.
Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering. Hello, my name is Zarakan Yu. Hello, my name is Zarakan Yu, and I am the founder of Zarakan Productions in Second Life. Over the years my company has had the great joy of filming many shows such as Wandering with Zarakan Yu, WWZY, Zarakan's Opinion Corner, Zok, Can I Shoot This, Sist, Adeline's Kitchen, Tony Blaze, and many more, but some of our proudest work has been our ongoing documentation of some of the wonderful entertainment that can be found in Second Life. But there is a problem. For every show that we have been able to capture for posterity, there are at least ten or more shows that go undocumented and vanish into the obscurity of fading memory, never to be seen again. This is a tragedy, but not altogether surprising. Filming in Second Life requires having both a computer capable of such filming, and having the time, to stay for the entire length of shows. Both of these factors, are rarely exhibited in one individual, and thus the supply of Second Life filmographers has been severely limited. We now have the power to change that. I have been in contact with well-known Second Life scripter Shan Bright, about the creation of a remote camera operator HUD, RCOH, which would allow distant control of an avatar's viewpoint, the receiver, by a series of other avatars, the transmitters. This will allow residents to combine their hardware and time resources, such that no one person needs to meet all the requirements of filming, and thus dramatically increase the number of available filmographers. We will never have to lose another show to time ever again. The exact details of the remote camera operator HUD have already been quantified with Shan Bright, and are listed on the project's Kickstarter page. Once the remote camera operator HUD is finished, per my agreement with Shan Bright, the remote camera operator HUD will be made available for free to everyone who joins the Zarkin Productions group. Please donate and make the remote camera operator HUD a reality for Second Life filmographers everywhere. Thank you for your time and happy wandering.